Hi Gemini, Happy New Year. Welcome to your monthly reading for January 2024. Thank you as usual to everyone who watches, likes, shares, comments on the video, subscribes to the channel. If you would like a personal reading, see the info in the description box. So these are the oracle decks I'm going to be using for today's reading. We're going to start off with a message from Goddesses, Gods and Guardians. The messages are for Gemini, Sun, Moon and Rising. So what do or does Gemini, Sun, Moon and Rising need to know for January 2024? What do you guys need to know? This card just keeps on coming out constantly. I think you're about the fourth sign to get this one. So it's basically a card of transformation. Um, yeah, it's a card of transformation. I actually love this. I'm glad this one has come out because I adore this message, this card. It's brilliant. I remember using it. Um, I think one of the first times I got it was when I did one of the early love readings I did um, where it was a four part series. And I think it was in, was it Challenges in Love? And it was something about your um, you need a visionary to get your quirkiness. So I always remember it from that. But yeah, so I will definitely read that one, the whole message from that. I will just check for the key points for that. Um, as I say, it's about transformation and embracing the change. And yeah, that sort of energy. So just make sure you can see that. Let's get your tarot cards out and then I'll get on to the oracle messages. So again, another tarot card to go with the main theme for... Gemini, Sun, Moon and Rising. Nope. Yeah, the cards keep on doing that, to be honest. It's a bit weird. They're feeling, I'm feeling very frisky, <laughs> which, like your fire, somebody might be feeling quite frisky, actually. Okay, kind of knew that was going to come back out, actually. Right, you've got the Four of Cups, Two of Pentacles. That's been quite prominent as well. You know, it's not actually surprising, though, because when we get to the end of a year and a beginning of a year, we start to think about what we're not happy with and what we want to change. And yeah, so it's not surprising that energy is there. Let's get your energy specifically within this. this the words specifically, what will it take? are coming to mind so I don't know if you mean what will it take for you to be happy what will it take for you to get what you want what will it take for someone else to change or what will it take for you to change um but yeah this the word specifically what will it take that might be the title of your video but let's uh, let's see what else comes out <clears throat> so Gemini's energy specifically please so you've got the nine of cups there external or surrounding energies, two of swords, hmm. I don't know if there is something very relevant about someone else in your life that's struggling for some of you you might be all right but you might have someone else who around you who's struggling and it's like it has a deep impact on you like for example obviously if you have a partner that you live with if there's something going on with them that could have an impact on you um and your happiness or close friends close family members work situations would be another one because obviously it's part for people who are you know full-time there every day it's part of your day-to-day -day life because of that what will it take energy like one example would be, you know, if somebody, <clears throat> if somebody's lives with someone who has depression, um, you might kind of be thinking, you know, what will it take to lift them out of this strange one? But anyway, um, past energies, please, around this. So you've got the Knight of Wands <clears throat> in reverse. I will say with the Nine of Cups, and it is probably just a pretty ob pretty obvious looking at it, somebody could be um, using alcohol or just generally kind of being outgoing and having fun to mask um, feelings of disappointment because 
sometimes as much as the ten of cups or nine of cups can come up i know it a few times like it's already come up in one reading this month for me and i know when i first started the channel it came up for a cancer reading where the ten of cups was it was a facade um so sometimes it can be a facade and obviously sometimes people do kind of i think i've probably done it in my life as well where you've tried to go out and have a lot of fun but really you're masking um what you're really feeling but i guess we'll see what comes out for that right it's like you're trying, but it's it's not hitting the spot, is it? So current energy. Current energy is death. I love the fact that I'm pretty sure death keeps on coming out when this card comes out. So, yeah. Okay. Anything else? I'll see when we get to it. And I know... I don't take death to mean literal death for the most part in readings. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I think there's been one or two occasions where it has come up and with other cards as well, though, not on its own. Um, and in context with the whole reading, there's been that energy around it. And it's usually in the past because I never set the intention to predict um, anything. But it's making me wonder if someone's grieving because that would be a reason that could contribute to someone's depression. That would be one way of masking things. I know for some people, like my um, mum, for exam example, when her dad died, and probably when her mum died, but I was very young then, so I can't remember, um, one of her ways of dealing with the grief was work, like just focusing on work and the day-to-day. -day. For other people, it can be partying, just doing a lot of things to try and have fun. Um, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that because everybody has their coping mechanism. But yeah, it's just making me think, is there any grief type energy here I mean it is change first and foremost it's about change and transformation but there's a grief possible grief energy there so potential future energy <clears throat> you've got the six of swords I mean again that's part of change isn't it it's moving on and guidance for you as well Right, I'm getting some muscles building up doing this, so <laughs> come on then, let's see what comes out. Right, Ten of Cups, okay, that does does feel right. <clears throat> so, let's get the book and have a look at these oracle messages. So we're going to start off with looking at the butterfly, I need to call it Beautiful Maiden, then Butterfly Maiden and see what comes out for that. So it says, beautiful change, keep your thoughts positive, rejuvenation is in the air. <clears throat> so one thing it speaks of here that I didn't, I have read this message quite a few times before, but I forgot about the part about rites of passage, actually. Um, rites of passage comes up in the Six of Swords. I, I forgot that's the meaning of the Six of Swords, that, that can be rites of passage. So for someone, could there be a rites of passage? if that's even how, how you would put it in a sentence. So like rites of passage, obviously for <clears throat> someone going into adulthood, although my readings are intended for adults anyway. Um, but like, you know, if somebody's gonna be 21 or 30, you know, like the Saturn return, Jesus Christ, that's a massive drama when you go through the Saturn return, the feelings. I'm not the only one. I've even talked to people who don't necessarily know about it or believe in astrology. And even they've said the Saturn return thing, it's, um tough so it usually starts from the age it can start from anywhere from around the age 27 but it's when you're heading into becoming 30 and I know that a lot of celebrities have been known to um unfortunately to commit suicide I'm not saying that this that's gonna happen to anyone here um but they have been known to commit suicide around the age it's just there's just something really tough and then so that's the first Saturn return I believe and then you have another one at around age 60 and then if you live long enough I think you get one when you're about 90 or something as well um, but yeah, so those are rites of passage as well, like 40, um, when you become 40 years old, 50 years old, six years old, yeah, there's different rites of passage, um, with that as well, um, but right, anyway, <clears throat> so also with this butterfly made, and it, it mentions, um, being stuck in worry about things not changing, I mean, I did say there's that whole what will it take, um, energy at the beginning, been stuck in negative thoughts possibly 
but butterflies are transformation so it's like the opportunity to change um if you felt stuck or or can't get out of a rut then there's the opportunity to change i think it would have been short for me to just read the message instead of talking wouldn't it really but um yeah right additional message meanings for this message say your positive efforts will pay off very soon say yes to this opportunity or invitation Appreciate the beauty that surrounds you daily. And the invocation says, change is good for me. I expect the best. So let's look at Pele, light your fire, which I, I as I say, I just love this message. I think I need a bit of that at the minute as well, to be honest. Right, Pele, light your fire. It says, channel your creative and emotional energy, get energised. Sorry, emotional passion, get energised. I mean, you can completely see there's a lack of passion and motivation here in the past energy for a start. But So Pele <clears throat> is the passionate goddess of volcanoes and fire who created the Hawaiian Islands. Said to dwell in the crater of the, and I'm sorry if I butcher any of these things now, Ki Kiluau volcano, Pele's molten lava both creates and destroys. Legend says that Pele journeyed from Tahiti to Hawaii in a canoe and was killed in a tempestuous clash with her sister, a Tahitian sea goddess. Pele's spirit lived on in the volcano, shape-shifting and reappearing to Hawaiian people at will. Powerful yet capricious, she can succumb to outbursts of jealousy that create volcanic eruptions. Pele shows us how to work creatively with intense, volatile energies and harness that inner fire. Pele explodes into your world today with volcanic force and searing heat, so prepare to be shaken and stirred. You may have been doing a good job at keeping a lid on your emotions and passions, but something might be about to erupt. As long as you channel them positively, you can boldly let your fiery feelings and creative juices flow. If you've been feeling lacklustre recently, I feel that might be an energy here for someone. <clears throat> if you've been feeling lacklustre recently, Pele is here to light the fire in your belly. Imagine this flaming goddess standing in front of you, warming up your solar plexus. She sends energizing sparks throughout your entire body. If you're feeling jealous, try Pele's healing remedy. Consider the person you're jealous of as symbolizing an aspect of your own inner power that you haven't yet claimed. <clears throat> Reframe this person as an inspiration rather than a threat. If they can do it or have it, so can you. Pele invites you to turn up the heat in your life, be an ardent lover, an enthusiastic contributor, a fervent force of dynamic creativity. Don't withhold your passion, live your soul, live with your soul on fire. Additional meanings, express and explore your sexuality in safe ways. Channel your anger creatively to create positive change through writing, art, physical movement, campaigning, public speaking and so forth. Respectfully visit and support Hawaii's sacred cultural sites. The invocation says I express intense energy in positive ways. I embrace the fire within. Okay, let's get into the tarot messages. So as I say, I am wondering if, if it's not, either there's a, somebody's masking here or there could be someone in your life that's kind of, their energy has the potential to bring you down. But um, but yeah, let's see what the clarifier says. So we've got the Four of Cups there and Two of Pentacles. I'm going to try my best not to spend too long on the main um, theme because I feel like the other energies are going to give us the most or what we need to know the most out of this. I mean, I've already established with that, there's that what will it take energy. You've got a sense of possible lacklustre, dissatisfied apathetic energy here and the two of pentacles is like there's a few ways of, of looking at that it's, sometimes it's where you're juggling the day-to-day -day, but it's just a bit monotonous and that's one way of looking at it it's, sometimes it's where you're trying to figure out what to do and either way it's still there's still something lackluster and monotonous about it right so two of pentacles four of cups So you've got the Ace of Swords. You've got the Nine of Wands. Uh, yes, okay. And just one more. 
<clears throat> I'm just looking, there's a two of cups under there. There really could be a grieving energy here for someone. Um, I mean, as I've said before, if even if it isn't recent grief, it's that time of year, isn't it? The end of the year, beginning of the year, where you think of people that have passed because you've got the two of cups, it's connect, that's connections. Um, let's get one more. Someone might need to be honest about how they're really feeling here. And as I said, I can't, at this point, I'm not certain whether it's you or someone else. Although if someone's masking, then yeah, you need to be honest, more honest about how you feel. There was another message that came in and I forgot because I was looking at the, um, five of pentacles and five of cups so i've kind of forgotten what i was gonna say oh needing to figure something out um struggling to figure something out which i kind of mentioned at the beginning so one more card six of cups yeah someone could be grieving over um some someone from the past um something from the past a situation so it could even be it could be literal grief, as in someone died. It could be grieving over a past relationship, a way of life, a version of yourself, even. Um, let me look at that Six of Cups on its own. And if you are stuck in the past, if anyone is stuck in the past, whether it is you or someone around you, it, it would have that, that question of what will it take to kind of get out of that energy. Um... And this two of pentacles now is making me think of having one foot in the past and one in the present. Um, in terms of thoughts, feelings, the way someone lives. I mean, one way of having one foot in the past and, the pre and one in the present. I think I've mentioned before hoarders. I mentioned hoarders. Um, I'm quite fascinated by hoarders, the concept of hoarders. I don't mean it in any weird sort of way, just in general. It's, yeah, um, because obviously they've got all this stuff around them from the past that kind of keeps their mind in the past as well, doesn't it? But they're, they're in the present. They've still got to deal with the people who are who are in the present with them. But yeah, Six of Cups. Yeah, it's a, it's a connection from the past. Whether it is, as I say, a romantic connection. Um, I think someone feels really lonely. And as I said, I don't know if it's you or someone else, but I just got a real wave of lonely emotion come over me just then. Um, massive wave of emotion. So whether that is through, yeah, I think someone might have, um, some for some of you, someone might have passed away or you're close to someone who's where someone else has passed away. Um, it could be a past romantic relationship as well. Um, could be childhood friends too. Let me look at that, um, that Ace of Swords. So you've got the Page of Swords. <clears throat> you know what I'm getting from this? Um, Yeah, from the Ace of Swords, I'm getting a vibe of not being able to... Somebody does need to be clear about how they feel and what's going on because people can't read their thoughts. And again, I, I'm still on that thing of I don't know if it's you or them. It could be someone else, but I'm still not 100% certain. But yeah... Something about not being able to read someone's thoughts, so they have to be clear about it. Let me get one more for that. No, not that. Knight of Cups. Let's get one more. Yeah, I mean, you've got the moon there. That is where things are hidden. This Knight of Cups here, for me, there, so there's the side of things where, in terms of people keeping things to themselves, there's two sides to it, and they can... Um, they can happen at the same time, can't they? Where, number one, someone doesn't express what's making them unhappy. And number two, they don't express what they actually want, what their needs are, what will um, what will make them happy. So yeah, you don't express what's making you unhappy and what will make you happy. And sometimes you don't know either, do you? You don't know what will make you happy. But um, there's definitely something here about, some, about not being able to be a mind reader. Um, I mean, you've got the two of swords there in that external energy which is one of the reasons I feel that there's a possibility that for some of you it could be someone around you um that's just like cut off um I mean I know we speak sometimes of two truths with the two of swords decisions needing to be made but this is a person who's kind of blocking everything out and everyone out possibly 
So yeah, I didn't want to spend too long on that. I mean, we've got the gist of it. There's kind of a lackluster energy. I'm still standing by what I said with that what will it take energy of whether it is to get someone out of this state of grief, to express themselves, to share what's going on in their mind, possibly. Let's look at the Nine of Cups, which is your energy specifically. And then from the, hopefully the clarifiers will determine if you are, if you're okay and it's someone around you who's having issues or... Um, if you are doing a bit of masking as well. But yeah, as I said, I got a loneliness as well from that Four of Cups. And it is one of those times if someone's single and they have, re uh, they have broken up with someone or they want a romantic relationship it is a time of year when people can feel really lonely especially if you're around a lot of other people and you see couples together and stuff like that I mean I remember I remember one time um when my son was little I think he was probably a baby at the time or very young baby or toddler and because I had always hoped that I would have more of, along the lines of a traditional relationship marriage stuff like that with kids um it devastated me, not just that I was single, because I am one of those people that wants to find someone as well, but it wasn't just being single. It was like when I used to go to the park and I used to see two parents, um, you know, mum and dad or whatever, um, whether it is two women, two men, whatever, parents, two parents and the kids. And they, it used to devastate me. I mean, I was happy for them, but I just used to feel like, God, um, I just wish I could have given my son this. You know, there's that energy there where, where you just feel so much regret and sadness and just why couldn't, why wasn't I able to give my son this? And that used to devastate, I mean, as much as it used to upset, being single used to kind of, I used to feel bad about that sometimes and kind of lonely and upset. And sometimes that still happens, not so much as it used to, but occasionally I do feel a bit lonely um, romantically, but it was for my son. I was just like, why couldn't I give him that? So I don't know why that's coming up. Maybe that's something for someone as well. That's a... And there's a kid on the bottom here, page of cups. Right, nine of cups. But yeah, I was talking about loneliness, picking up loneliness in that, and it being that time of year where, you know, seeing people with their families and some people spend Christmas alone. And, you know, obviously it's your choice. Some Sometimes it's your choice, but other times it's like you, you don't really have much of a choice. You just cut off, detached. So nine of cups. Why is the nine of cups there for Gemini? Sun, moon and rising. So... Right, we have the Ace of Wands and the Page of Wands. I mean, that is that light your fire energy, that is the spark. Is Gemini masking at all or is this literally just someone else around them? Because it's a weird contradiction if you're in Nine of Cups and this is here as a main theme, that is really odd. Unless it is that, what I just said about being single, sometimes you can be perfect. Yeah, because you've got shared happiness at the end, haven't you? That Ten of Cups. Somebody, you, someone might be transitioning into, um, into leaving kind of the single life behind, possibly, or isolation. You know, like where you, you usually keep to, like you're content, but you keep to yourself. You might be going into a period where you're around other people more and sharing sharing enjoyment more with others but um I've literally forgotten what I was going to say now because I was talking too much um the, the ace of ones and the page of ones are that light your fire kind of energy aren't they but let's um let's continue so is there anything relevant about Gemini masking or are they just good yeah so I think the point was the nine of cups is where you're satisfied on your own like you can turn on your own and what I was saying before is that um but sometimes you get lonely and um you want company you want companionship. You want the companionship. You want to share that happiness with someone, don't you? So, anything else? Right, you've got the Two of Swords death card. Hmm. Did I read something in here about keeping to yourself? Or am I like imagining that? Let me just check the book again. So it was the Butterfly Maiden. So 
So it mentions being cocooned and stuck. Um, nope, okay. Not in that part anyway. Let's continue. Let's try that again. You got the Queen of Wands there, so you've got a lot of fire energy. This is a really weird, contradictory, um, kind of a contradictory energy. So from these cards, it wouldn't look like you're masking anything. Although, as I say, it could be that you're satisfied on your own, but you need, you, you want a bit of a change. You want something, you want to level up, basically. Um... I think there's always room for more happiness, more excitement. Like we can be okay, but we can still get more, which is fine for that. It's just this energy is really odd. I mean, maybe it is that you just don't know if you do want to level up, you just don't know how, but we've still got that grief energy there, haven't we? Yeah, I'm finding it weird. It might just be the only other thing I can think of is that it's just individual messages. Like it's just two separate messages. To be honest but um so as i say you've got that fiery energy there but let's look at the two of swords and de the death card because the death card is in reverse um so two of swords because that can be sometimes where okay. justice the sun I swear some of these readings for this month and I'd, it must be something to do with the month where people are just in a phase where they're not sure what they're doing but it feels like I'm in the movie Saw trying to figure out how to figuring out puzzles and jigsaws and stuff trying to trying to get out <laughs> because some of the the way the readings have come up is really odd like the energies are so contradictory and it's just disjointed and it's just odd it's been really odd so you've got the justice card the sun and the seven of pentacles Let me get one more after that. I mean, if you are levelling up and I had that what will it take energy, it could be like, what, what would it take for me to be happier? Like, what could I do to be kind of happier, happier than I already am? That's one way of looking at it. So you've got the Wheel of Fortune there. You might actually be in a little bit of a comfort zone, to be honest, where which I'm surprised Nine of Pentacles hasn't shown up, where, as I say, it's like you're doing all right, but it's like, I want the next level now, um, because you realise that you are in a comfort zone, and it's just like, what's under here, actually, the death card? You're ready for something different, you know? You might not know what that is yet, to be honest, but it's like, there's there's more out there. I've got a lot of, actually, about people expanding their horizons in this month's readings, and as I say, again, with it being... Um, well, it will be January when you when you watch this. I think it's New Year's Eve tonight, so today. Well, it will be the new year in about, what, seven hours? Yes, yeah, seven hours. <laughs> It'll be the new year. Um, but yeah, it could be just that, well, what can I do to expand my horizons now? I'm all right. I've done all right. And yeah, what more? Although, as I say, this message here, that just feels... I, I don't know if that's just a completely separate thing altogether at this point in time. We've got the death card, which is like... It's like a delay in change, isn't it? Or a, it can be avoidance, but it can be a delay. It's probably not avoidance because I would say with that, two, if the Two of Swords was next to it upright, then I would say somebody's avoiding change. But because it's reversed, I mean, that's where you come out of sort of that being unable to um, decide on something. So it's just like a delay now. It's like you, you might have that fire, but you just don't know or the desire to kind of fan the flames or whatever you want to call it but you're not 100 percent sure how or what to how what it will take for that so what am i doing the death card page of cups the fool there's definitely a sense of readiness there you've got the two pages which are the start of something you want it's like with the page of cups you would want a new feeling Page of Pentacles, it's a new new beginning or something new physically. And with the Fool, you're ready for it. But there's nothing um, 
tangible here to say what that is. So you might very well be in a, in a frame of mind where it's like, it feels, I'd say I'd use my nuttiness at the beginning, but clearly there's some, if you've got the nine of cups there, there's some degree of satisfaction where it would even be like, okay, I've come this far, I've achieved such and such, I'm ready to expand now, I'm ready to do something new. So that this that came out here, I did say one of the meanings for this Ace of Swords could be coming clear. I know there was a, the, there is still a thing about it where somebody needs to be honest with themselves about how they feel, the good and the bad. Um, but this can also be about becoming clear about what you want as well. I mean, Nine of Wands, that could be the battles you've overcome. You could have very well overcome this grief. If it's not someone that's holding on to that, it's someone who's overcome all that grief. So I could be picking up on past energy actually, but... As I say, it still stands. It may still be that someone is literally in a state of grief and, and feeling lonely. So we'll leave that. As I say, so it looks like that Nine of Cups, it's it's knowing that there's more for you. I can't remember which other sign got a reading that's similar to that, where it was that level up type energy. Um, but yeah, let's look at that Two of Swords. That's cute. I'm very curious about that now. Because that's an external energy. So I did say, could that be someone, um, could it be someone else? Or is it just the energy around you of, right, what do, what do you want to do? Um, what do you want to do? So two of swords, why is that there, please? What do you want to change in your life? Or how do you want things to change? Right, we've got nine. the nine of swords. That's resistance to change. That is with the Nine of Swords, Four of Pentacles, Two of Swords. I wonder if there's someone that's kind of holding you back a little bit. For someone, there could be someone or something in their life that's kind of like they want to change. But they, as I said, there might be something holding you back. I did say... At the beginning, like if you had a partner, for example, you live with somebody who who's grieving or has depression or something. And I'm not blaming anyone for having those um, dealing with those conditions and emotions and stuff. But it does impact the people that they're close to and it can impact your progression as well. Um, because that the nine of swords, four of pentacles, the moon, that really is an energy of. Well, it's not knowing with the moon and the two of swords there, but it's also holding back and, and that four of pentacles can be stuck in a rut. So if it is you, although you might be reasonably content, you might still have these moments of or feel in the back of your mind this thing about I need to do something differently. I need to expand. I need to improve. And you're not sure what that is. Um, you might be just struggling the day to day and thinking about that. But as I say, it could be someone else in your life who is kind of whatever's going on with them it's having an effect on you and what you're able to do let's look at that queen of swords i can't find what flipped <laughs> something did flip six of one see that feels like your your energy whether you are a man or a woman that queen of swords feels like your energy what you want to do you want to be successful so whether it's that you're aware that you want to expand and and put yourself out there more whatever it is or it's as I say the other energies are the energies of um this energy is of being held back by something or someone and you're just kind of trying to manage the day to day let's get one more for that queen of swords so you've got the seven of wands and six of pentacles was it Sagittarius who got a similar reading to this one I think it might have been because you've got so the seven of ones. I mean, it can be standing up for something, but it could also be like a blockage where, as I say, you want to um, you want to put yourself out there. You want to you want to be successful. You want to enjoy yourself more, possibly, or do something differently. But there's that blockage because there's a particular thing or place or something that's taking your time and energy. And it's kind of having an impact on, on what you're allowed to do or what you can do. Right, let's um, shift on from that energy because sometimes you can sort of overanalyze stuff or I can overanalyze stuff. Let's look at the Knight of Wands. I mean, clearly that's a past energy where there's been a lack of motivation or a lack of action at the very least. 
I mean, that could be, as I said, if someone has experienced grief and stuff like that, that could have been the past energy where if you're dealing with grief, that's all you've got the energy to deal with, isn't it? A lot of the time um, and the basics of day to day life. You haven't got the energy to sort of have light your fire and stuff like that. Right. Knight of Wands. Why is that there as a past energy, please? <clears throat> So we have Queen of Cups. It's making me think of repressed emotions, that is. Um, whether it's just emotions in terms of, again, like if it's grief and you're just trying to push your emotions down and deal with day-to-day -day life, or <clears throat> in terms of where you've been unhappy with things and wanted something different and you've pushed that down. But the word repression feels like the key thing in the past can also be where you don't know what you want or you don't know what you feel as well. So you've got judgment there. You have the seven of swords. You've got the devil. That judgment card, I'm getting something about a wake up call. Something about a wake up call there. Eight of Wands and we've got the Four of Swords, but I don't know which way. I'm going to put it back, actually. I don't know which way it's meant to go. It fell on my lap. Um, <clears throat> so as I say, the Judgment card could have been, although you may have, have felt like repressed in some way, shape or form in the past, you may have also had this wake up call um, as well, where you sort of actually realise what wasn't what was holding you back, I would say, because you've got the devil, which can be to do with fears, what holds us back, what keeps us trapped. And then you've got the Eight of Wands where I often speak of that being progression, movement. So for me, the devil next to the Eight of Wands, it's what holds you back, isn't it? Let's look at judgment because I said that was like, it could have been like a wake up call, to be honest. Well, it's a wake up call that you, you have a new truth and you want to progress or move in a different direction or a different way. Um, anything else? So it's knowing it, um, there's a sense of knowing there, but you, again, you might not have known exactly what you wanted to do. Ten of Swords, so I would say it's where you know what you want to, to end, what you want to leave behind. Do you know what you want to move towards though? That's another question. Let's look at the devil out of curiosity. So justice being there with the devil, one of the things that could have held you back, and I've kind of said it in, in other ways, is doing trying to do the right thing. Um, I feel like I've said this in Sagittarius is reading as well, like where you've had certain obligations, whatever they are, where you've you've had to do the right. You felt like I have to stick with this and do the right thing. But like, as I say, it can hold you back sometimes. Let's get one more for the devil. So for some, it could have. Oh, I thought that Ten of Pentacles was upright then. That's weird. So for God. OK. For some of you, there could have been a marriage or family situation that's held you back with the Justice card, the Hierophant, the Ten of Pentacles. Sometimes that speaks of marriage or long term relationships and commitments. Um, so, yeah, for some of you, a marriage could have held someone back. For others, it's traditions. As I say, it's doing the right thing. It's traditions. There's a whole let. I mean, I know this particular Ten of Pentacles doesn't have fam there's family members in it, but it is Ten of Pentacles can be associated with family and legacy. For, so for someone, if it's not marriage, it's family, something to do with family and obligations there that could have held you back. Um, there could be also be something in terms of finances. I mean, I know for a lot of people... Um, who are married sometimes one of the sole reasons that they do stay together is because it's more stable um practically and financially isn't it um so yeah let's look at the eight of ones quickly and then i'll move on right i mean what i can say with the world temperance um the Empress, it's not necessarily anything specific other than saying that you want to kind of move forward or move on or progress or do something differently. It's just going into a new cycle in general. <clears throat> but one, that's more harmonious, more peaceful for you um, with the Temperance card. One where you probably get to be more creative um, in whatever way that means for you, whether it is literally creative or just 
I can't explain what I mean by that, to be honest with you. You know, when people say think outside of the box, I guess that that form of creative, something different from what you've done before. Um, the, um, the Empress and Temperance card can be kind of creative energies. I mean, you've got the alchemy there, creative with the Empress. Um, and it's more self-empowering as well with the Empress energy too. So let's put these back. So past energy was one where you are you either lacked motivation or you were held back. To be honest, there's there's that repression energy there. And as I say, for some, these cards kind of represent what what may have been holding you back. Um, obligations, long term commitments, those sorts of things. Doing the right thing as well. So the death card is in the current energy. That is where things are changing. You're changing. Things are changing. You're changing. So what do we need to know about that? What do we need to know about the death card? Right, I would say that is an energy that you're in. You want to build new stability, a new life, possibly something new. Someone might want to build a house. I mean, if the four of ones comes up, someone wants to build a house, potentially. A new sense of happiness. You might want to build upon new dreams. Or old dreams even. With that Knight of Cups there. You've got the Three of Pentacles. You might want to... It might be that you want to work better or collaborate in a better way with the people that you already know. Or it might be new people that you want to collaborate with. Or it might, might just be about doing things in a new or different way. Or a way that works better for you. I was waiting for that. I was thinking inspiration and then the Knight of Wands appears. Um, so going back to that Light Your Fire card, it's it's like you have the dream, you have something that you want to build practically, but it's something inspiring as well that inspires you to keep going with it, to be honest, and just to light the fire in general. So let's get one more for that. New opportunity with the Ace of Pentacles. There might be a new financial opportunity here for someone with all the pentacles, the king, the three, <clears throat> three of pentacles, ace of pentacles. There might be opportunity to work, literally work with different people or in a different environment or industry or something to that effect. Um, let me have a look at the ace of pentacles just to see if it gives something specific, although I'm sure you'll know what it is based on your life. <laughs> so teaching is one of the first things that comes to mind. Um, as a new something new that someone might, might, might want to pursue um, if we're going down the career route teaching um, what else comes to mind something in the legal field as well I think I believe the king of swords can be um, associated with medical things as well um, so like I think the king of swords can be a doctor a surgeon that sort of thing it might just be in terms of expression and communication maybe you want to express yourself in a different way or you want to use communication in a more expansive way that's another thing that comes to mind let's get one more for that king of cups now so the king of cups career wise it speaks of counseling spiritual teaching um, there can be a creative side as well anything else but notice how they're kings so the kings um, they're the ones that, that, that have mastery and they're very proactive you've got the hierophant there let's see, why is the hierophant there? does someone want to become a, um, like a justice of the peace or a um oh what do you call it now i know the name and i've said it on the channel before and i can't remember what it is when the people that marry people i know there's a, the name and it's gone um oh god i can't remember to be honest now but i know what the name is of somebody that marries people um not in churches though so, so um ceremony oh, no i can't remember and i know someone who has that career as well so <laughs> Why is the um, Hierophant there, please? I mean, there's definitely a sense of authority here. So whatever you're doing, you, you have authority over it, whether you are in a position of authority. Two of Wands.
magician, I feel like that needs to be upright. Whatever you choose, regardless, it's knowing that you have the authority to choose and to um, develop the skills in that chosen path. There might be something scientific with the magician, to be honest. And that is about, can be about communication as well. So let's put these back and let's move on to that potential future energy, which is six of swords moving on. So whatever you're planning on doing, I mean, you're already in the phase of transformation at this point in time. You know that you want to do something differently. You may actually have an opportunity or you're creating an opportunity to do it. And then the six of swords future energy is just moving, moving on, moving on with the plan hopefully leaving behind if there's anything that you need to leave behind in the process it's leaving that behind so six of swords so two of cups page of swords the sun Someone might, there is the possibility that someone might have to believe behind a relationship, whether it is romantic or not. And that, like, especially if it's family, it doesn't necessarily mean like cutting all ties with them and through arguments. But like, say if you wanted to move across the world um, from your your immediate family members, like your parents or or something like that. It's like moving away or on from them. Like you, you still have the relationship, but it's like if you're going across the world, then you're moving on from them. Um, but as I say, someone also could have a new truth here. Something might um, might become very clear. Could be someone moving towards a relationship as well. That's a possibility too. I'm gonna come staring at me like it wants to share something. <laughs> You've got the Temperance card, whatever you move towards. I mean, the Six of Swords alone is already about moving to Karma Waters. And then you have the, um, this feels up. You already have the, you have the Temperance card there as well, which is about peace, etc. So I think whatever you do, it will, you will have the courage to do it, to, to go into the new travel. Um, again, you had travel with the Six of Swords, because that can be relating to travel too, and the world as well. Um, that can be a travel related card as well it's new cycles but it can be travel too um i will say with the sun and the world that's a very expensive expansive energy whatever you're doing it's very expansive and then obviously the sun like your fire there's something very inspirational about that um that sun being there in whatever you're doing it might be that you figure out what inspires you if you haven't already figured it out you probably will figure out what inspires you and what you want to do let's have a look at that two of cups and the page of swords so two of cups first I don't know why I feel like for someone, like if someone's got some sort of ties to their parents or something, you might be kind of going off into the world to discover life for yourself, but you have to kind of break away a little bit. Um, again, it's not necessarily about entirely cutting off your relationship with them, but it's, it's breaking away from the familiar, familiar people to go and explore something different for yourself. That's a possibility. And then the Four of Swords, it can be like, Taking a break, distance, that type of thing, can't it? Two of Wands, yeah, choosing a different path. Magician. So, yeah, somebody might kind of be distancing themselves, not in necessarily in a malicious way um, or a way but because of conflict, but from people that they were close to to kind of explore, expand, etc. Let's look at the Page of Swords. I feel like that is breaking away from familiar tradition um, and it doesn't, it, it, tradition could be anything from the traditions of your family to culture to society, whatever it is. It's learning something new for yourself. Yeah, because you might have felt restricted or um, disappointed by the way you've done things before. The Empress for me has kept on coming up in the last couple of readings as being who you naturally are. Um, so yeah, with the Empress being there, it's being who you naturally are. And again, it's another expansive, expansive type energy. So let's go on to that final card of advice for you. So Ten of Cups. I mean, obviously it's a card of happiness, fulfillment. But let's see what the clarifiers say about that. 
So Ten of Cups, please, and then I'll get your final card of advice. So you have the Seven of Pentacles, Four of Cups. I mean, the first question is what? What makes you feel happy? With the Seven of Pentacles and Four of Cups there, that is settling and it's obviously telling you don't settle for anything less than what makes you feel happy. Even if it takes you a long time to, um, to get that. I mean, as I said, with the Nine of Cups there, there's a sense of contentment or satisfaction there already. But if you, if you are looking to it to level up and expand and be happier, you know, don't sort of settle. You've got the star, like reaching for the stars is um, slightly corny as that may sound. Yeah, don't settle, reach for the stars. Six of Pentacles. Four of Swords. I feel like with the Seven of Pentacles and the Four of Swords, it's kind of saying there's no rush. Um, and it might not happen quickly as well. And it, there might be trial and error involved too. Um, I know this is advice, but it's like a, a bit of a heads up. Let's look at that Six of Pentacles. I feel like that's more like the reciprocity type energy of whatever you decide, you choose to give your time and energy to, make sure that you're getting equal, something of equal value um, back from it. And it doesn't necessarily mean monetarily, but... Whatever you give to, make sure that it feels worthwhile. It feels like it's worth it. So again, don't settle for anything less than what makes you feel um, feel happy and satisfied. You might also, with that Six of Pentacles, Five of Wands and Nine of Cups, you could... This is similar to Sagittarius' reading, so you might have Sagittarius as your Sun, Moon and Rising. Um... Or rising, should I say. You might face a bit of opposition. I think they got this as well, where whatever path they decide to go on and however they decide to kind of put themselves, you know, take care of themselves. If you face any opposition, just remember that you do have to kind of look out for yourself as well. Um, don't let anyone distract you from your path. But also, again, the energy of it. it you might face challenges. Um, it might take time to achieve that whatever it is that level up that you want to achieve but you know be patient with that too so let's leave it there and i will get your final message of guidance from the black moon lilith cosmic alchemy oracle deck <laughs> so final message for gemini sun moon and rising from the black moon lilith cosmic alchemy oracle deck your final bit of advice oh i love it i love it it's that pluto energy um transformation death card those are associated with pluto um i think capricorn got that as well actually so Let's have a look at that. So Pluto, Endings and Regeneration. So that message says... You might want to check your birth chart for your Pluto sign as well. It does give um, dates of when what your Pluto sign might be in, but they, some of them overlap. So, yeah, for the exact dates, you might want to check your birth chart. There's a link. I think I've already said it now, unless it was in the last reading. There's a link in the description box to get, generate your birth chart if you don't know your Pluto sign. So it says, misalignment can manifest physically as that uneasy feeling in the pit of your stomach. Pluto can sense this and likes to break everything down and remove what no longer serves you. It teaches us that beginnings and endings are intrinsically tied together. It is the natural cycle of life. Hidden wealth, inheritances and debts are also a part of Pluto, indicating change in this area of life. Allow this transformative wave to pass over you. It will wash away the shadows that have held you back from activating your light. In ancient Greco-Roman mythology, Pluto was the lord of the underworld. And hidden wealth also known as Hades in Greece. He presided over Earth's lower realms and the rich gems, minerals and metals found in the ground. Pluto is the planetary ruler of the fixed water sign of Scorpio. Scorpio rules alchemy, sex, death, rebirth, psychology, the occult, secrets and transformation. While it's, malefic, while it's a malefic planet and can be difficult, there is much to gain when Pluto, when your Pluto is integrated as it can unlock your soul's hidden riches. Pluto is a generational planet in astrology, so each age group has the same Pluto sign. 
While Pluto can create chaos, it also brings to light what we have swept under the rug to be healed. Understanding Pluto in your own life is tremendous shadow work and integrating yours can lead to personal empowerment and evolution. The following is a brief alchemical guide to the area of life where you will expect experience ego deaths, change, karmic events and transformative tr triggers. So it says the life metaphor meta metamorphosis according to your Pluto sign. So Pluto in Cancer, um, people born from 1913 to 1939. So that's family, traditions and the home. That's where you might get from um, life metamorphosis. Pluto in Leo, 1939 to 1958. Ego, creativity, self-expression. Pluto in Virgo, 1959 to 1972. Health and perfectionism. Pluto in Libra, 1971 to 1984, Relationships, Equality and Love. Pluto in Scorpio, 1984 to 1995, Crisis, Death and Regeneration. Pluto in Sagittarius, 1995 to 2008, Beliefs, Worldview, Spirituality. Pluto in Capricorn, 2008 to 2024, Structure, Security, Hierarchy. And finally, Pluto in Aquarius, 2023-2044 to 2044. Um, collective Ascension, Innovation, Technology. And it says, everything must come to an end. Wipe the slate clean and make space for the new. And I'll just point out, if I haven't already, because I've done re so many readings today, you forget. Um, this channel is actually intended for adults. So, yeah, <laughs> just pointing that out because of the dates it gave um, here in this in this book. So... Yeah, I don't really have anything to add, to be honest with you. Hopefully that message was helpful to you. Feel free to like, share, comment on the video, subscribe to the channel. If you want a personal reading, see the info in the description box. And thank you very much for watching. Again, wishing you a happy new year. And as I said, it's New Year's Eve here, so but you'll you'll see this after. You'll see this after, so it doesn't make any difference. But yeah, hope you hope you had an enjoyable celebration if you did celebrate. Thanks for watching again. Happy New Year. Take care.